I got started in the whole art form was really just an a observation, I think. You know, just seeing it. You know, just seeing how it was like infiltrating the subway system, how it was infiltrating my neighborhood. So the curiosity of that was attractive. You know, it was attractive because there was a whole culture that was emerging that was outside of what was being prescribed to us as things to do. You know, this wasn't a prescription. This wasn't a, a choice that was given to us. It was something that was founded, you know, by, you know, some outsiders. So that was attractive to me. And uh, I wanted to find out what it was about. You know, I, I seen the writing. I seen the style of the writing, and I knew it was powerful. But uh, intrinsically, I thought that there was something even deeper than what was being presented. And I had to find out what that was. So I had to do it. I actually did involve myself deeply into the art form throughout my high school days. And um, it was like in the early 80s and New York was definitely changing. And I felt that I needed to escape the identity that I created in New York and start anew. So I was fortunate enough to get into Brockport. I actually got to Brockport as a non-matriculated student. They didn't accept me as a student. Uh, so I had to come to Brockport my first semester and actually prove that I was college worthy because my high school grades were so bad. It was a huge turning point. Um, at, this, at the time, there was this song out by Sea Wind called Follow Your Road. And uh, you know, I was like, wow, this is, I have to follow this path. This is a path I have to take in my life right now. And uh, I knew that I wanted to pursue something in business. So, you know, I was like, all right, I'm going to take business at Brockport. But I still had a strong, strong uh, art, street bombing mentality. So I came on campus and I, I still wanted to and needed to express myself. So there was really not many places to do that except for the Fine Arts Tower. So I found the Fine Arts Tower, and with the same mindset that I had of as a writer, like, you know, looking for opportunities to write, you know, paying attention to time frames and schedules, you know, I kind of plotted and schemed on the tower about when I would do my name in the Fine Arts Building. So yeah, I did that quite frequently. Um, Prior to coming to the Brockport for this project, I was extremely busy, so there wasn't a lot of planning to do, which I thought was pretty, uh, I was pretty comfortable with that, though, because I know I've done a lot of projects that have been very intuitive in nature, and I knew I was working with a bunch of students that I have never met before, so there was a whole bunch of variables, a whole bunch of unknowns, which is really like my life. My life story is constantly walking into the unknown, so I was, I'm getting comfortable more and more with that whole concept. So once I got a chance to meet the students and we walked over to some of the areas that we had the potential to paint, you know, we just started conversing and, and you know, brainstorming and just asking questions about what they were visualizing and what we were coming together. And we kind of highlighted the areas that we felt we had a commonality with and we kind of just pushed in that direction. So I'm really grateful because, um, you know, I had the opportunity to kind of like get intimate with each of these students to some degree and find out their strengths and their weaknesses. And like some students were just like absolute muses. You know, they would just actually come one day and just kind of like dissect everything that's taking place and spit it out and help push us in the next direction Others were really helpful with like sending text messages to each other to keep people organized. Like, so everybody like played a real valuable part, which was essential to you know, the successfulness of the project. The project itself, um, you know, we, there was a group, of, a group of us, and we all had a different schedule. So we didn't have a set time, a set day. It was just when you can work, you can work. Okay, what's going on now? What do you need to do? Well, we're painting this wall blue, so start painting that wall blue. And then as we were doing it, Pose would come up and be like, no, do it, do it a little bit more this way. Oh, you missed that one spot there. And he was very meticulous about it, so you know, we were trying to be quick or something, and he would just say, 
got to make sure you know it looks good and that things are all coming together. It was difficult because my schedule's a bit crazy, but um, when I did have time to work on it, I'd stop by and be like, hey Pose, what's up? What can I do? So um, it was fun. I'd stop by and ask him what I could do. He'd have something here, something there for me to paint or add. And um, I did a bunch of the background stuff. We would do like paint washes and gradients. And uh, I helped with some of like the shadows and backgrounds of some of the objects that he would paint. Um, so yeah, and then I'd get to watch him with his uh, technique and he'd tell us how he would uh, incorporate different things and uh, get the smooth lines and all the different techniques he used. He was very motivational. Whenever you did do something that was great, he would just come in and be like, this is, this is so great, this is so fresh, what do you guys, and he would just have so much energy and that would um, revive us enough to be able to keep going. It was pleasurable. It was pleasurable finding out these nuances, you know. Um, I think in the past as an artist, I've always been like, I had my own ideas of what I'm going to create. Um, this time I was more comfortable and more allowing with asking them their opinions and what they seen in their direction and how that added to the project. And so like in these exchanges that take place, it's not just me as this instructor who's guiding, which, is, which, I, which I do, and I think I do a good job at it, but it's also like this, you know, this exchange of information where I'm giving information too to help guide. So it, it's a healthy relationship that's formed, you know? I was prepared in the sense that like before he came to campus, I looked up some videos from him, saw what kind of stuff he was into, and um, looked at what his name meant, what Pose stood for, and um, so I got a little bit of background of, about him, and it was interesting, like, then I got to meet him, and I kind of knew a little bit about him already, and so I learned more about him, I don't know, his processes, his life, his stories. I didn't feel like I was prepared at all because I thought we were going to work mainly with spray cans, but I was excited when we, I was told that we were going to use acrylics um, to, to paint the wall. So that was easy, you know, just kind of filling in space with colors. And um, I realized that I had way more can control than I thought that I had. He actually told me that because I used spray cans at my job to just spray six digit numbers on um, just different products to tag them. And I was surprised that my experience with that translated to this. And then when I got my hands on a really good set of spray paint, it just, it was great. And uh, he was able to point out what you did well and what you could work on. And um, yeah, it's, it's really, it was a really fun process. <laughs> so my creative process is nothingness. You know, it truly is nothingness. Like I said earlier, like I had no idea what I was going to create. It's really about listening. It's really about um, being as present as possible. It's about like, you know, like last night I was gathering all these colors for what I was going to use for to mark today's painting, right? And then I threw this can into the crate and the whole crate spilled over, push, because I had my my uh, planned color scheme that I kind of used, right? And the whole crate fell over. I was like, okay, so what are you saying to me now? It's like, okay, okay, you use that color scheme over and over again, let it go, come back tomorrow and figure out what you're gonna do. So it's just like, even these little weird things that happen, like, you know, I'm just paying attention to them. And, and flowing with it and using that as the information, not as a like, oh, damn, the crate fell. Oh, I got to pick up. Yeah, it fell, but it's, oh, I'm always asking the question, like, what's behind that? You ever see, like, let's make a deal? What's behind door number two? So <laughs> that's what it's about. It's, it's challenging as being an artist, you know, because artists are, sensitive. When I mean sensitive, I mean that we are very, we can hear, feel, and you know, it affects the things that people say and what we do. And the, uh, the thing is that we're, when you're painting in the street, you're constantly exposed, just exposing yourself, right? I feel like a naked man painting, you know, because people have the opportunity to say what they want. This one guy came by one day and just said something just like, 
totally off the wall. And I was like, wow. And it was like so in the beginning of the stages of the painting. And I'm like, wow, you already have a strong opinion about what's taking place. Um, so some things you got to just kind of like <laughs> just let flow off of you and keep painting because I'm like, yeah, you haven't even, you don't even know what time it is yet. You haven't even seen it. And it's also, I could respond and say something really, you know, smart back, but I think I let the art do that. That's, that's the beauty of the art, you know what I mean? Like everybody's going to have an opinion. I think people form opinions early sometime, you know, because the beginning stages might look really rough and uh, obscure and undirectional. You know, but as time goes on now, like the, the responses are changing. Like, yo, that's awesome. Like, yo, you know, like, so it's good to like, you know, not have to like physically or verbally respond. Let the art, that's what art does. So I'm grateful that, you know, we have a team of people that's helping to make it all come to that level. So I, I learned that a lot more goes into it than just, you know, it's multiple layers and he covered up pieces too. Like originally on the underpass, there was a little like um, fish looking bird thing. And he was like, I can't include this on campus. I'm at Brockport. I can't include a different bird. I got to include the golden eagles. I don't know. I thought I was just kind of like doing something kind of cool and innovative with the first bird. And it was, it had a bird and it was a plane and people thought it was a fish and it had all these kind of things going on. And I, I have to admit, I think it had to do with somebody comment too because they were like oh it's not an eagle and I was like okay okay and you know as much as I uh, am really pushing to express what's coming through my mind I also want to pay attention and I think it's like you know we're at on Brockport campus which I am an alumni right I've gone to the homecoming football game so I've been affected by all the, you know, the social activity that's been taking place. And I was like, you know, if you're going to do a bird on this wall, like, dude, you got to rock the eagle. <laughs> so I just, was, and like the thing that I did and originally, I just could not tie it into the wall. I just did not see how it made sense. So I was like, yeah, I have to bring the eagle in. And I think uh, it makes sense. It makes sense. A lot of times when I'm painting, right, there, there's stages of painting. There's usually like three stages, you know. There's like the first preliminary stage, you know, then there's like a drawing phase, and then there's like a painting phase, and then there's like the overall concept. How does it all come together? So those are the aspects of change that you're talking about. Like, so I might be looking at one individual part of the painting and focus my attention on that. But then I'm, I started painting on the other part of the wall, on the other section of the wall, so I'm looking at those all individually. But then I have to look at the bigger picture and how do those things interact with each other and make an overall concept. So it's just everything was just great timing. You know, we would come and we'd relieve him for a break or something. And he would go to his hotel real quick and come back. And he was always just like, you guys just have a radar. You just know when the right time or the right thing and just felt like we weren't um, obligated to be there all the time, which was, which was really nice. Um, he understood the flexibility, and he worked with it, and he liked to work like that. I think, and my goal has always been to change perception. You know, um, from the moment you asked me the first question about the art form and why I was attracted to it, I was attracted, the hidden aspect that I was attracted to was the way people reacted to it. And it used to be extremely negative. Um, through my investigation and the practice of it, my goal has always been to change people's perception on not only how they respond to it, how they think about it, how they interact with it. Personally, I think it's inspiring. I mean, it's amazing. Every time I go by, even though I worked on it myself, every time I go there, I see something new and it pops out and I'm like, wow, I didn't see that before. Or wow, that's really cool. Or I see something in it. Yeah, it's good because I think, um, I think you know, as a painter, I have a lot to offer. And as a human, I have a lot to offer. So, I mean, giving those opportunities to share that is great. 
So here we are, 2014, some 30 years later, uh, sitting in the seat, sharing what I've learned, giving back. My name is Pose 2, and that name stands for Prophet of Self-Education. The visual communication of Pose is like these uh, letter forms, and Max Moses is like the um, visual expression of abstract shape, color, and energy.